So this is the architectural strategy of moving glass walls with thermal performance. It's presented by the team at Western Window Systems. We have Heather Bergeron and Ty Cranford here with me. Um, my name is Bo. I'm from Ace Lab. Um, I'm going to get our presentation started with just a, a quick short intro about Ace Lab and about ourselves um, and how to connect with today's speakers directly on Ace Lab site. Um, that'll just take a few minutes while folks join, and then we'll get started with today's uh, webinar presentation. All right, let me check my waiting room. All right, cool. So it seems like we've got some folks jumping on already. So I'll go ahead and get started with my little portion. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the architectural strategy of moving glass walls. Um, I'm Bo. As I mentioned uh, before, I'm going to just give a quick intro um, about Ace Lab. We are ho helping host today's event um, and show you how to connect with our speakers from Western Window Systems um, directly through Ace Lab. I'll take care of a few housekeeping things in uh, regards to questions and uh, poll answers and all of that good stuff, and then we'll go ahead and get started with today's uh, presentation. All right, so as I mentioned, um, I'm with Ace Lab. Um, we are a tech platform that offers free non-sponsored building product research um, for architects and builders. And uh, here's a quick snapshot of our team. So we are started, um, you know, by architects for architects, really with the goal to be building tools um, to help help our community and help our industry design better buildings um, and, you know, streamline our workflows to be able to spend more time designing and less time looking for the information that we need. Um, so this is kind of a, a graphic describing, um, you know, some of the problems in the workflow tools that Ace Lab is working to replace. And I will quickly jump over to our live site. All right, so I'm already signed into my account. So um, once I've signed in, I come back to this dashboard library. Um, so you can see a quick overview of all of the work that you've been doing, products you've saved, um, conversations you're having. And I'll just show you real quick how to um, get to a manufacturer when you know who you're looking for. So all of our searchable product categories are located here in this dark blue bar. If you don't know what you're looking for, this is a great place to start and be able to browse with one of our guided search tools. If you do know what you're looking for, if you came to this webinar and you really want to get in touch with Western Window Systems, you just jump right into that top search bar, type in Western Window Systems name, and there's a button right here to connect directly with Ty. We have Ty on today. Um, so you can see his little face and connect uh, directly here. You can nest that directly under a project or start a new project. Um, if you don't have an active project, general research or you know firm standards is a great thing to throw in there. We'll ask you to update product info or project info if you haven't already. And then you can select exactly the product that you might be looking into. Or if it's more general, you can skip this question. You can also select exactly the information that you're looking for. And then you go ahead and connect. And that'll create a conversation over in your Ace Lab account. So you can always find your conversations over here by jumping back to your library. Conversations are right here at the bottom or located here in the top right. All right. And if we have some extra time at the end and there aren't uh, too many questions, I'll give a quick spiel on how to use our search tools to also find Western Window Systems through a window finder. Um, and then we've also made some like really exciting updates to our shortlist process that I would love to show folks who are interested. So um, I'll maybe hang back and do that for a few minutes at the end for anyone who has an extra few moments to stay. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much all for me. Um, so if Heather, you are feeling ready, I'll go ahead and hand it off to you for today's uh, presentation on the architectural strategy of moving glass walls. Thank you, Bo. Cool. All right. Stop my share. And you should be able to share your screen now. Oh, actually, one last thing. Just want to encourage folks, um, there is a Q&A chat box. Um, feel free to enter your questions throughout the event. We'll definitely save some time at the end to answer those. Um, and if we do not get to your question, we will have a record of it um, so we can follow up with you after the event. And the one last thing is I'll also poll everyone at the end of the event. Um, if you would like to get in touch with today's speakers, you can also just go ahead and answer yes to my poll. It's a super easy way to uh, get in touch with them after today's webinar. All right, that's it for me now. Heather, take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Heather Bergeron. I'm the architectural consultant for uh, the entire state of Texas. Um, just a little bit about Western. We are a single source thermally broken aluminum manufacturer out of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we started out in the late 50s as an insulated glass company, and um, 
worked our way into the fenestration industry of creating um, large operating glass wall systems as a full product line of array of operating windows and um, hinge and pivot door uh, systems as well. Um, so during uh, this presentation, you will see um, a full array of all of our series that we do have to offer. Um, and I do have some extrusions just so that you can kind of just see exactly um, what each um, product um, is included in into the products as well. So our agenda today, uh, what we'll be covering is our different series that we have to offer. So our classic series, our 600 series has been around since the beginning of time uh, as we started in the fenestration industry. Um, our performance series we released in 2018, um, you have better U values and um, DP ratings, PG ratings um, is different. Um, so it's more energy efficient, uh, larger glass sizes. Simulated steel series we released in 2019. It's a simulated steel product that is simulating the look of steel without actually having the steel cost and actually the steel pro like metals, right? Um, it is all thermally broken aluminum. And we'll go into some details more um, further along in the presentation. Uh, we also released our 300 series minimalistic sight line on IVS earlier this year. Um, it's incorporated with our classic series, a 600 multi-slide. Uh, we'll go into more detail about that. We also have a Martin garage door uh, company that we had acquired back at the end of last year. Um, they're out of Salt Lake mm -hmm. City and um, they have a full array of customary um, garage door lines that they do have to offer as well. And then um, a thin triple glass option that is coming up at the later lateral part of the end of the year or beginning of next year. So um, we are proud to, um, to say that we do uh, assemble and have complete units here um, within our factory and everything is um, based here in the US. So um, this is just a slide just showing exactly, you know, some of the layouts that we have in our factory, but um, we also, uh, fly proudly our U.S. American flag because, you know, everything is assembled here in the U.S. And when you're looking at this photo and you think of Western window systems, you're looking at a full array of a multi-capability of what Western's all about. So very modern, contemporary, full glass house here um, out on the West Coast. Um, we have satin anodized finishes here within the space. Um, as I mentioned, it's a full array of different products, whether that's a multi-slide um, that you see here in the corner on the right-hand side. Um, you have some minored corner glass units here with some direct sets that are all mulled together into one 90-degree corner unit here. Um, you have another two-panel option here as far as multi-slides as well. Just a full array of what Western is known for when you're thinking of um, these large glass uh, systems here into your project. Our different product series that you see um, within this, um, this slide, everything that you see here on the left-hand side is considered our classic series, okay? So like as, as I mentioned before, we've had these series for quite some time. Um, that is what Western's known for. And then everything that you see with the seven in front of it is our performance series that we released back in 2018 with the higher energy efficiencies, okay? So we have window wall series here, our multi-slide, sliding glass door series, casements, which is operables, uh, as well as awnings and hoppers. We do have those options as well. Swing doors meant being a hinge door options, pivot door, and a bifolding door and window wall system, okay? The differences between our classic series 600 and our 7,000 series performance series is the energy performance, your structural performance, your sizing capability, the mulling capabilities, matching of the styles and the rails, and the frame depth difference. So when you're thinking classic series um, and you're looking at the thermal break, there's a thermal break here that's called a pour into bridge. All right. You have a performance series on the thermal break that is a strut system that you see here. So that is the difference is of what each series is based on energy efficiency. So with the pour into bridge, depending on the actual series that you're going with, whether it's a window wall or say for instance, a swinging hinge door option or whatever the case is that you're incorporating into your project, 
that energy rating could be different depending on the size of the unit and um, the space of the opening and everything that has to do with the opening and the energy per performance. When you're looking again at the thermal strut on the performance series, this series is based on the energy efficiencies of a 0 0.30 U factor with your design pressures being a minimum of 50, okay, across the board. Um, in the classic series, it's a little bit different depending on the series that you go with. It could be anywhere from a minimum of 25 up to uh, 35 or 40, depending on the design pressure of that series. Um, the structural performance. So um, depends on the actual series that you go with. with whenever you're looking at the classic series, if you have to have structure, say, for instance, in a window wall series, your structure will actually go in between the two extrusions. So you never see it's concealed into the system. OK, um, mulling capabilities for the performance is a little bit different here. Um, it's not two extrusions that go together as far as, you know, the way that it, uh, the way that it is in the design here that you can see. Um, it's basing on a clip system whenever you're putting two window walls together as far as the mulling capabilities. Sizing capabilities between classic is a maximum of 70 square feet of glass per panel. Depending on the windows, you're up to a maximum of 60 square feet per panel. In our performance series, we have um, up to 80 square feet of glass per panel. In oversized glass, we can go up to 120 square feet per panel. The two Frame depth difference is our classic series is a four and a half inch jam depth versus our performance series, which is five and seven eighths, because it's more of a beefier product to get those better energy efficiency. Here's an example of our 600 series window wall. You can clearly see here these large um, direct set units here, okay, that are mold vertically and horizontally. Um, this particular project is also on the West Coast, and it's just a full array of all the direct sets in different sizes um, that's clearly within the space here. And obviously, there's nothing obstructing those beautiful views and trees that you see here. So this is what a 600 series classic window wall would look like. The different options that you have in a classic series window wall, you have the option of a standard base seal that you see here. The glass stop is a square glass stop that sent three and three quarters of an inch back off of the front. This is where your glass would be housed in between, right, the extrusions. And then it's three quarters of an inch as far as your height. When you go into a high base still, when you're wanting more water protection, uh, more of your warranties to cover you against water, we have what's called a high base still, and this is what the high base still looks like. You get an inch and three quarters here, okay? And these particular stills can be uh, directly on the finished floor, whether that's concrete, pile, whatever your finished floor is going to be, these systems can be directly set onto your finished floor here. But remember, your high base still is gonna have more water protection. Your standard stop, as I mentioned, is the three quarters of an inch setback here to your glass stop, okay? And then this is what the structural steel stiffener would look like if you have to have structure in between um, a window wall series when you're mulling two um, units together. That's about up to uh, 10 feet or 12 feet options that we have, okay? When you get into our performance series, um, this is an example of a window wall system here with structure in between. Um, but again, you still have the high base still option here. Here's the thermal strut that you can clearly see. It's a little bit better than what I was showing you earlier because you can actually see it on my screen. Um, here's a standard base still, still at three quarters of an inch here. Um, this is where your glass stop would go um, on the extrusion. Both series is both classic and performance and all of our products except our multi-slides and bifolding doors have what's called an extruded nail fin or nail flange, whatever terminology you want to use. That extruded nail fin is uh, there to help with the ease of installation during construction, whether that is to um, keep that unit um, plumb level square in that rough opening, uh, ease of installation uh, whenever you're using your fasteners around the unit to install, and also for waterproofing purposes. Our extruded nail fins are also an inch set back onto the extrusion. So if you're using classic series within that four and a half inch dam depth, 
that extruded nail fin would be three and a half inches. And if you have our performance series, which is typically a five and seven eight jam depth, that extruded nail fin would also be an inch setback as well. Here's an example of what a traditional modern farmhouse, glass house, hill country house would look like. Um, here you are having some clear story windows here that you see above your entry, as well as some direct sets with more transoms. Here at the 90 degree, this is what's called our corner post option. You can clearly see that you have two different styles of um, extrusions here for a corner, corner post. It's not used for structure, it's just based on that custom fit and finish to whenever you have a 90 degree option of putting two uh, units together. Or you can also have the option of using brick metal in that area as well. As you see on the columns here, not really sure if this particular project that we have done in the past is an actual corner post that's just wrapping the column or if it was brick metal. But you can clearly see at the 90 degree, you have that nice fit and finish on a classic series home here. We also, as I mentioned, uh, we have a minor degree corner unit, as you saw on the first slide. Here's an example of two panes of glass here with a mitered unit. So we actually corner cap the mitered unit to have more of a custom fit and finish. Um, you do also have that option of a minor corner uh, without the extrusion um, to have a more custom finish, but know that depending on the glass vendor of your choosing, um, we use, we've partnered up with Cardinal IG and they have a gray silicon finish that's a little bit easier on the eye, but it's still not very appealing when you're looking for a fit and finish there. So that's why you have the option of having that nice edge there, both interior and exterior of having that extrusion to cap off that corner of the actual extrusion. This is just a generic detail that you see here of, of the extrusion of the minor corner with the um, normal break, the glass stop, and how that particular corner is uh, for a minor unit. And it's the same for performance series. Again, as I mentioned, it's just the differences in thermal break. Here's an example of a project um, that we have with our hinged windows mold to a direct set. So here you have your transoms here, mold to a, what we call a 670 casement or a 7670 casement. So here you have nothing obstructing your views here. You still have a really nice look of having operating walls incorporated into your direct sets, which makes it like a window wall application into this beautiful bedroom. Another example of a classic series window wall here where you have three large direct sets with a casement and also your clear story windows here, all vertically mold here um, with a standard base still here within this master bathroom uh, bedroom so that you don't have anything obstructing your view as well. Not all the time is Western window systems, again, used in contemporary or modern homes um, based on when your project is located or what your client's preference is. You can see that Western window systems is also a fit for a um, hill country project or a modern farmhouse. Um, here within this project, they use um, you know, the hard finishes of using stone with our aluminum finishes, finishes here of bronze anodized. So, um, Again, you have the pivot door with direct set horizontally mold here um, with a 600 and 670 series. They use both 670 and a 670 direct set here so that the sight lines are the same and it mimics here your sight lines with the horizontal mold of the direct sets mold the pivot door. You also have a direct set here on the top of just, you know, a plain glass of a, just a single unit. You have some clear story windows of transom. It's a great project of having that natural light um, within the project um, here. You also have hinge doors, whether that is a medium style or a narrow style profile. Within this project, they have what's called a medium style 
um, for the double hinge doors that you see here incorporating into the project. Again, a great example of a modern farmhouse here that has differences of the exterior facade. Um, the reason why I like talking about this particular project that we had previously is, you know, we're not just a modern contemporary manufacturer that focus on just like large um, glass houses, but we also have, depending on where your market is, where you might have the option or the client's preference of simulated divided light. So the simulated divided lights that we have, both in classic and performance, are flat bars. We actually hand apply these to the double pane um, glaze uh, within the unit. There's a spacer bar that goes, a spacer bar that goes in between the two glasses so that you don't clearly see glass all the way through. The simulated divided light helps stop your eye with that. So we have a seven-eighths bar here, or we have an inch and a half flat bar for the option. So you can clearly see that this is a great um, example of what a simulated divided light looked like. Now your bars are customary depending on your client's preference and what type of look you're going for. For example, this is a two wide, two high rec set unit here with the simulated bar in between. So you have simulated bar on the exterior and simulated bar on the interior as well. Our 600 series multi-slide, you can clearly see in this project off the West Coast, we have a 90 degree corner unit here on a multi-slide, right? Um, this is a hmm, two panel three. It looks like one is stationary when you have some panels stacking to the side on the right hand side, and then you have a pocketing system here on the left hand side. So it's a great way of having that indoor-outdoor living within a small space. You, again, you're able to um, acquire your additional square footage here into your yard area to have just that full natural light, natural airflow throughout the space. Um, these are some generic details of what that 90 degree would look like here um, of the panels that are venting into the side. Also within the space of a duplex that we have, uh, we have a hinge door option here as well as stacked horizontal units of direct sets on the top as well. All the different options that you see here as far as your seals within a multi-slide, there's full array of different um, options that you of your choosing. Um, here's an example of what a water barrier seal would look like. This is your inch and a half let interior leg goes on the interior for better water protection. Most manufacturers as well as ourselves, is always gonna recommend having a waterproof sill or water barrier sill so that no water is actually intruding into the interior of your space. This just better protects you, your homeowners, your clients, um, you know, if you have a commercial project or whatever the case is and you don't have necessarily like the proper overhang, just keeping out that water from from the exterior and having any, any elements coming into the interior space is always gonna be the best bet. Multi-slide means multi-track, multi-panel. So each time you add a panel, you're adding a track, okay? So this, for example, is a two, a two panel here because there's two tracks. Again, this is on our classic series that you can see here, but it's that inch and a half on the interior leg and it's protecting anything uh, from entering the inside of your home. You also have a flush still option as well. That's three quarters of an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch, okay? Um, this does not have any water protection or any protection against the exterior elements. So um, for example, this one right here that you can see is literally a two panel again. Um, it's quick system area for two panels um, is right here. I don't know if you, can, you guys can see that. You can clearly see here as well in the, the actual extrusion of what that would look like. Um, but again, three quarters of an inch flush the option. You can also recess e any of the sills into your finished floor as well. Um, for ease of access for ADA, um, or just if you have a client that doesn't necessarily wanna have to step over any of the track, there's also what we call a sill riser option too. And what that does whenever you're installing is just two pieces coming together, just like so. And you can have that on both sides, especially if an interior application, um, 
from exterior to interior. It's just the ease of, you know, that transition there, okay? Then you also have the option of what's called our thin line sill. Our thin line sill is here used for that really seamless transition from floor to floor. It's embedded into your finished floor, so you never actually see the track itself. You would only see the actual top part of where the rollers would actually roll. It's embedded in there, so there's no water protection. There's no way for the sill to actually weep away water. So therefore, we would always recommend um, having a, this particular system having a third-party um, drainage system, okay? Um, in our multi-slides, you do also have the option of having a 1.8 inch roller, which is a stainless steel roller. That's what we offer uh, within Western Windows uh, systems so that you don't have any issues. It's smooth operation on the long front. So you have the option of 1.8 inch roller, or you have the option of a three inch roller. Okay, this is an upgrade. It does cost us a little bit more than what you would normally have on the standard here. Great project here. I uh, love talking about this photo. I get questions all the time. How does that actual thin line sill work into an application? You can clearly see here that you can offset that thin line sill. It's embedded into the finished floor, which is tile here. Another option as well is, you know, you can see that this floor here is also slope of the slab of the exterior, but you can also see that third party drainage system so that nothing is intruding on the interior of the home here, okay? There is a overhang on this side that you can clearly see that will help with no water coming into the home, but clearly you can't really tell on the other side what that overhang would look like. Um, but to know again that with this system, it's not water rated. So therefore we always always recommend a drain by others. You can also use the thin line sill in an interior application as well, whether that's like a wine room or if you have a commercial project and you have um, a conference room, it's a great addition for an interior space as well. Here's a great example of our 7600 multi-slide. 7600, again, is our performance series. So you can clearly see that we have large panes of glass here that's pocketing into the system um, of the space of this home. So you got a panel here that's pocketing on one side. That's just this one panel. And then you have a three panel option here on the front elevation. So um, it looks to be... Uh, probably about seven feet by 10 feet. So it's about 70 square feet there. Um, again, with the performance series, you're able to go larger, bigger, taller sizes. Still the same sill differences um, from the classic series. You can see here you have a water barrier sill, flush sill, and thin line sill. Um, for high performance, uh, we have a sill that goes up to two, uh, 2.6 inches um, in case you need extra water protection. If you don't have like the clear overhang that you would need for that water to stay up from the interior, uh, but the minimum would be about an inch and a half on that interior, like as I mentioned before. So still the same options that you would have as a classic series, just the differences between classic and performance is the thermal breaks here that you see. great project that we did off of the West Coast. Um, just You can see the full array of um, multi-slides here uh, within this space. Okay, you have full array multi-slides that are stacking to the side. You also see a drop down here that also has some multi-slides that are also stacking to the side here. Full product line of direct sets uh, within the sitting area that's overlooking um, to the ocean. And then we also do geometric shapes as well here, uh, whether um, that's just squares or rectangles or circles. Um, we're able to do the radius tops um, within our classic series because you're able to bend the core and the bridge, but you're not able to bend the strut. Okay, so there's no radiuses that are available in the performance series. Another great photo of a multi-slide here uh, with a recessed sill that you can see. Um, obviously, this is used with our flush sill option. 
Um, this particular customer and client uh, wanted to open up her whole kitchen area for, um, you know, having guests come over and actually hosting her guests at her home. But she was also worried about the security of it too. So in the open position, you can clearly see that all the panels are stacking behind this bay of um, direct sets here. And um, you can clearly see that um, you have a bay of awnings here. So if you're in the closed position, you can still vent and have the natural airflow coming through the whole space downstairs into this residential project. You're also gaining your additional square footage here um, from the exterior. So again, great example of indoor outdoor living with the multi-slide. Here's an example of another multi-slide in satiny anodized. Um, two different options for hardware. You have flush mounted hardware we, or you have what's called premium handle. Multi-slides can get pretty heavy with a smooth operation. So there, therefore, sometimes clients don't necessarily like to always use a flush mounted handle because it tends to get a little bit heavier whenever you're pushing all the panels, you know, depending on how your configuration is. Sometimes the clients like to have more of a handle shape option to where it's more of an ease to get um, all those panels to stack um, to one side. So you do have the, those two options. You also have automation. So you can automate these multi-slides. We as a manufacturer do not offer this. But we do have uh, three companies here nationwide that has installed their automation onto our systems. And these are also used through our distributors if you have a client that is looking to incorporate automation into their space to help with the multiple panels that they have in a, within a multi-slide. A great option for um, a value engineered option if you have a client that has a little bit of a tighter budget and is not able to incorporate a multi-slide into their project, we have what's called a sliding glass door option, both in classic and performance. In a, in a sliding glass door, you have the option of two panel minimum up to a four panel, panel maximum. You can clearly see here that you're still able to have that rough opening large enough to still get the views into the space of that indoor outdoor living. You can clearly see we have a four panel here. It's an OXX biparting configuration. So your two panels would slide to each side, still opening up space here. You cannot pocket the sliding glass door systems. They are a single track system, but you only have one track. You have a two panel here, whether your configuration is an OX or an XO, um, very customary here, um, incorporating a sliding glass door into the space. We can go up to 24 feet, 12 feet, 15 feet, and then up to eight feet, 10 feet tall, all the way up to 12 feet tall, depending on your client's preferences. Another great example of a sliding glass door here within the space. Again, opening up the interior to the exterior, you also can see that you have some clear story windows that are on incorporated uh, within the sliding glass door system. You're not able to mold direct set directly on top of the sliding glass door due to the weight. So therefore you have to have structure in between the two um, products here. So here again, you have a four panel slider here where you're able to have the large views and then you have a whole nother set on this side as well of a three panel option here. This is the bedroom side of the home. So the whole side of that house is being opened up to the elements, which makes it really, really great and having a really great option and conversation piece. Our 9550 and 7950 by folding door systems. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you can also have these options as a window system as well. Both options have in swing or out swing. You have a maximum of eight panels on these systems. Top load options, head load, okay? Top load, head load, whatever terminology you wanna use. 
that means that all your structure is from the top and all the way to the panel is going to be from the top of the actual system here. These systems do not pocket, they just slide and stack to the side. So you have rollers that would actually roll on the head, and then you have rollers that would actually roll on the bottom as well. Here's a flush fill option that you see here within our classic series. Here's the U track where the actual rollers would roll in between the system. Within our performance series, as I mentioned, you had that 0.30 U factor. It's a single track system as well with our bare ball bearing rollers, again, at the top and at the bottom. And then all the styles and rails would actually match all the way around. Um, some clients prefer an outswing. You're not intruding on any of your interior space when you have an outswing option. Um, so just to kind of keep that in mind when you're talking with your client and deciding, you know, what swing of the bifolding door you're looking to incorporate into the project. Here's the water barrier still here. So shown in our performance series, there's the thermal strut that you see. And then here's the flush still option that you see with the thermal strut option. And then the U-track. U-track is typically used in like a countertop situation whenever you're looking at that pass-through bifolding window. You wanna always think too that there's no way for this system to actually weep away water. So therefore, again, we would recommend that you have um, drainage by others here whenever you're incorporating the U track into the into the facade of the home or your project. Hinge door. So hinge door options is 900 for our classic series and 7900 for our performance series. We're able to go up to 12 feet tall in our hinge doors. Um, there is maximum width whenever you're incorporating um, hinge doors into your project. So um, these roller catches here that you see, when you typically tend to go a little bit higher, uh, sometimes it's a little bit harder for that top of that door to be sucked into. So that's why the 12 foot kind of gets a little, little bit tricky here. Um, but this is an example of our classic series, medium style hinge door, you also have a narrow style option. And then if you're in a commercial space, we have a 10 inch bottom row option here. Both outswing and in-swing applications. Here's an example of what that threshold would look like. So if it's in-swing, it would be one way. If it's outswing, it would be another way. It's just kind of flipped around. Um, you still have your thermal break. Again, this is classic series. If it was performance series, you would have the thermal strut here. Um, but this is an example of what that threshold would look like for the hinge door. Hinge door options um, in the door series also comes with a multi-point option too. Uh, depending on the actual height of the door, you might have a five point or you might have a six point multi-point. So that's just for more security uh, for the project. Here's an example of that hinge door within a window wall because you're able to mull everything together here. So here's a transom mold to a hinge door that's outswing with a side light on the side and a high base sill. You can see that high base sill for more water protection, okay? Whenever you're mulling as well, I just wanted to say that that mold from glass stop to glass stop is about three inches. So it still gives you that very narrow profile that you're looking for. This is what we call our premium hardware, okay? Um, obviously a key option if you're using this for an entry door, right? Um, it's available in both satin anodized or satin nickel, as well as black. So the black would actually match um, your anodized finish that you're using. So it's just based on, you know, the customer's preference if they're wanting a satin finish or if they're wanting a black finish that you can see here. Pivot door. So our 980 pivot door is classic series and our 7980 pivot door is our performance series. Our pivot doors come with a ladder pull offset option. So you can see the offset of the 48 inch ladder pull here. Both again, satin anodized and black finishes. 
You have an in-swing or an out-swing option. Typically on our pivot doors, the minimum offset is about eight inches, but depending on your preference, you might want to request, you know, a bigger um, offset depending on your opening that your client is wanting to um, cover coming in and out of the door. Um, just depends on, on the actual client. These doors are not water rated um, because they do have a commercial seal where you have like a riser on each side of the threshold because uh, you have to have a way for that door to actually operate in opening and closing. These doors op also have the option for concealed overhead closure for a more smooth operation of self-close. So you do have that option that does have to be chosen uh, during production and whenever you're ordering because it cannot be done after the fact later in the field. Um, it, the way that the framing and everything is, it has to be an option included uh, in the very beginning um, during production. Here's an example of a project that we um, have done in the past in Seattle, Washington. You can clearly see that this is a multi-residence. You can clearly see the luxury kitchens uh, throughout the space. Um, we did incorporate our sliding glass door systems into this space, and it is a six-story building. So classic series, we can go up to six stories. Um, that is what we're run rated for. Um, if you decide to go the performance route for more energy efficiency, we're able to go up to 15 stories um, with, with our testing. Our simulated still line, um, again, as I mentioned, we released this product back in 2019. It's only available on our performance series, five and seven H jam depth, okay, for that beefier product, more energy efficiencies. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, you have the options of simulated divided light, okay? So these are our flat bar options that you see. When you're talking simulated and you're going up against a still project that actually has true divided light steel, we're simulating that with thermally broken aluminum. And what makes a difference is we have this is a 7 8 putty style bar here. You can clearly see here in, in our display, this is at our home office in Phoenix, Arizona. We hand apply all of the mutton bars into this system. So we're simulating, simulating that still look without having the still cost of a still unit because we know how expensive still can get. You're still able to have a large sizes. Um, that spacer bar still goes in between um, so that you don't see glass all the way through. You're having the spacer bar in between helps stop that eye. Okay, so you have a offset track of a multi-slide here as well as a minor unit of our minor corner unit. Here is that extrusion that you see that makes it more customizable fit and finish. Some casement options and awnings as well as a hinge door all included in this whole display of what our simulated still line looks like. And as you can see, it's all mold together. A project that we did for a parade of homes out in St. George, Utah, this particular project was completed into a custom paint finish, not a bronze anodized finish, but it has the whole huge window walls that you see in performance series with simulated steel. They use brake metal here within the space uh, for that capping of the corners here because we do not have the corner post in the performance series. It's just a great cost saving using the simulated steel into a project and it has the same look of what a steel you know would look like. Here's some generic details of that simulated still that I was talking about. So instead of having that square, square stop option that you would typically see on just the regular performance series, you can clearly see that you have a bevel stop. That bevel glass stop is simulating the bevel of the actual mud bar, okay? The new 300 series that we, re re we released at IBS this year, as I mentioned earlier, 
is our 600 series classic that you saw earlier in the presentation. We came up with the 300 series because everybody is liking that very narrow minimalistic sight line. As you can see here, we have a five panel multi slide here. Okay. In this interlocker, instead of on a classic series, which is typically 2.55 inches on the actual interlocker of where all the panels are meeting here, that interlocker is actually an inch and an eighth. Okay, so you get that very, very narrow profile. You're still able to go up to 12 feet tall, maximum of 70 square feet of glass per panel. You're still also able to operate the door with an automation system as well, okay? Also, the rollers are a little bit different within this system. So instead of what you see on a normal classic series multi-slide, which is, this is the 1.8 inch roller again, we've incorporated our Quadzilla mini roller, okay? That's due to this bottom rail of the system, as you can see here in this particular slide here, is two and a quarter inches. Again, very, very narrow profile. So you have that minimalistic look. This is the interior of what that system looks like as well. And then incorporated into one of our projects. Um, it's a three panel slim line option here for you. Great view as well, nothing obstructing your view. This is the Western Window Systems website. We revamped our website at the end of last year. So if you guys want to notate that for any references of any upcoming projects that you may have. A little bit about the garage door company that we acquired at the end of last year. It's again called Martin Door. They are known for having the world's finest, safest garage doors, okay? The reason why, uh oh, what happened here? I'm not working. I'm frozen. Oh, there it goes, sorry guys. Um, the reason why we incorporated this into our product offering, as you can see here, they are known for customary options, uh, whether that is aluminum or steel options. This particular series is called the Athena series, okay? You're able to incorporate any kind of glass or acrylic laminate options um, within the garage door. You can clearly see you have four panels of glass, but then you also have stationary of whether that's steel or aluminum, or you have a full garage door that has all glass panels. So it's a great product offering when you're thinking very transitional home or project, um, if it's a multifamily and you have units on the outside uh, for garages for folks to you know, store their cars in there, right? Um, at any apartment living or any of the cases. Um, any of the restaurants that have garage doors, overhead doors that are also uh, for that indoor, outdoor, very natural airflow. You know, it's a great series that just completes that project of that package. They also have powder coat finishes as well, wood grain options and a limited lifetime warranty. Their Pinnacle series gives you that very carriage uh, house style. Again, you have steel or aluminum. It can be very, very, very smooth as you can see here within the panel. You can also see that you have arch options here or faux wood grain options. So their panels are very, very customizable. All of their joints within the system are mechanically fastened. And then again, you also have the powder coat finishes as well. Here's their Keystone series with a little bit more of a four faux wood option. A little bit more flush here. As I mentioned, they have wood grain options. Cornerstone also offered in aluminum or still has that very, very flush panel option here, gives you that modern contemporary look as well as a very uh, traditional style as well. Copper, 
Their copper is 99.6 up to 99.9% um, actual copper. We all know that copper over time patinas, but sometimes those clients like to have a patina finish, as you can see here. This particular customizable option in copper is a project that they incorporated back in um, Arizona. So you can see the sky line of like a mountain in Arizona that's incorporated on the actual panel of copper of the garage door. And then the chalet series, again, more carriage style. Uh, you have the options of having the wood option there as well. And also incorporating any laminate or acrylic um, glass panels as well. I can't, you're muted. So there we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, like, Heather. Um, and yes, thank you for letting me know I'm muted. Um, that was great. Super informative. Um, just wanted to let everyone know that I launched our poll a few minutes ago. So if you're interested in getting follow-up information sent to you um, directly after this webinar, just feel free to answer to that poll. Um, and then I also want to encourage folks, we've got looks like 10 minutes left. So we definitely have some time for some questions. Um, I see we've got a few already, but if you have any uh, questions, feel free to either enter them in the chat or you can also raise your hand and talk out loud. You don't have to turn your camera on and I promise it's not that scary. So feel free to do that too. And I'll keep my eyes peeled to see if anyone has a, a question that would be easier to ask out loud. Um, but let's see, first thing. So John says on the corner mitered glass detail, what's the maximum glass size? Um, <clears throat> on that one, it would, it would, it would depend on what the wind load requirement is for that area. Um, we can build, um, you know, we can go up to, you know, 50 square feet of actually building it per side. Um, but yet the way that we would handle that is get a good understanding of what, where this project is, where the location is, what's the wind load requirement for that area. And then kind of work it back that way through engineering is, is typically the way we do that. Because to be frank, we can build a uh, uh, a unit larger than what, um, you know, it needs to be. <laughs> so we, we need to work that backwards through an engineering standpoint and build what um, what meets the requirement. But I mean, off the cuff, I mean, with with zero hesitation, you know, we can put 50 square feet on either side um for, for an opening okay great cool and let's see i'll put in one more call for questions to see if we get a few more um i have a quick question and heather apologies if you mentioned this already um but this is just something i get asked about a ton um do your products all have um florida approvals um like the miami date approvals or um general yeah approvals for the state of florida So um, we, so everything is AMA tested, um, but as far as Florida goes, um, we are in the process of retesting our performance series within Florida to have um, all of those testing. So it's not necessarily gonna be like Miami-Dade, it's gonna be the Northern part of, of the state of Florida, um, mm -hmm. But we are going to have an impact option on our performance series here, hopefully by the end of the year, or beginning of next year. Uh, we're still able to meet the DP ratings of 50 within that. Um, you know, I know you, you guys there in Florida also have the option of having um, like a storm screens, um, shutter systems or, um, you know, we also can do laminated glass within our performance series as well. But as far as like the Miami-Dade, uh, we're, we're working on that to get that testing done so that we're able to pass. Cool, great. Yeah, I know that can be a process. Um, see, Christine asks, um, I'm curious what the options are for screens on the multi-slide doors that open at the corner. So typically, whenever you're adding a, string, a screen, you're actually adding to the track as well because the screen is actually has its own track. Um, 
You do have the option to have a full screen or you have the option to only have the lead screen as well. Um, it just depends on the configuration and the preference of the client. Um, if the client doesn't necessarily like to go with us as a manufacturer screen, um, folks also like to have the option of a third party um, screen, whether that's Phantom or Wizard or anything like that, just because not all the time um, is the screens like really a great thing to look at, but I understand that there's bugs that, you know, like to come into the spaces if it's an indoor outdoor living um, application. So screens are always that option. Um, but I would say on a 90 degree corner, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have to have the two screens so that, you know, you're able to meet at that corner so that, you know, nothing is coming, coming through. Mm -hmm. um, so again, too, to think about is the panels for our screens is a little bit larger than actually like what the interlock would look like. So um, it depends on, you know, the client and what kind of look they're going for. But sometimes that that panel is a little bit wider. It's not it's not narrow at all. Well, as you were talking about screens and bugs, it just made me uh, think about the we're in Miller Moth season right now in Denver, so I don't know if anyone else is um, located in Colorado and um, experiencing this, but um, yeah, screens are very important and uh, ones that <laughs> meet with no gaps. The screen at my front door has like a little bit of a gap, so every morning I've been waking up to, you know, hundreds of moths that I have to shake out. <laughs> um, I, I've also had it to where folks have asked me about the air walls as well. Like, you know, if you're opening up these, you know, large, you know, indoor outdoor living spaces, right? Um, another option would have that air wall. Cause I know like whenever you're into the grocery stores and whatnot, you know, and those doors are opening and you're having all these flow of folks coming in and out, right? It uh, depends on, you know, if it's commercial or residential, but yeah, they have these air walls. I've had questions about that too. Like, how do you, how do you keep out bugs? So that's oh, an option. So there's like actually kind of, for like a commercial project, you could like basically put in like an air pressure system that would just kind of create a barrier there. That's create really cool. that barrier. Uh huh. I had never really well, thought about how that works. <laughs> one thing on that topic of screens and multi slides, um, if if you have a client that's really sensitive about screens, is the stability of it and the quality of a screen, the the Western Window Systems is a is would be something that they. Uh, would be very pleased with because basically we just use the same frame component as a panel and we and we put the uh, adapter in there where the screen spline goes in there so it's mm -hmm. literally the same as a panel as far as the strength and stability same mm -hmm. thing on the 90 degree and, and, and just like that so you have that that option and of course always you know the aftermarket screens are the ones that are less intrusive visually but if they want a substantial screen that's definitely the one to uh, Western can definitely uh, make them happy. <laughs> awesome. That's great to know. Cool. Um, I just want to mention in the chat, I just uh, put a link for the Western Window Systems uh, page on Ace Lab. Um, so that's a great place where you can jump. You can view product info. Um, you can connect directly with Ty and with the Western Window Systems team. Um, so just want to make sure you all have that. And let's see, we've got a few minutes left, so I'll put in one more um, if anyone has any other questions before we finish up. And if not, I will use these few minutes to uh, show you how to find um, Western Window Systems products through Ace Lab search tools as well. All right, I don't see anyone raising their hand yet, so I'm going to go ahead and just quickly uh, share my screen to do that. but I'll keep my eye on the chat. So if anyone does have a question, feel free to enter it. Um, so I showed you all this page at the beginning, uh, if you weren't here yet and you missed it. Um, so you can just sign into your Ace Lab account. If you know the manufacturer you're looking for, just type it right here into the search bar at the top. Um, if you are doing a more general search and you wanna kind of see you know, what the other options are, um, you can just head over to any of these product categories in this top bar. So I've headed over to Windows, oh, excuse me. Actually, I'll just show you from here. Um, oh no, seems my yeah. screen recording is not liking this. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stop this share. Sorry about that, folks. Sometimes sharing my screen on Zoom is not my friend. Um, 
anyway, really what I want to explain there was just that that uh, search tool exists at the top blue bar. You can go ahead and uh, use that to be able to find Western Windows Systems products, kind of compare it to the other options out there. Um, and I will just go ahead and send over the link to that page as well so that folks can hop on directly to that. Great. All right. So it looks like we've got one minute left. If no one has any other questions, um, I think that'll do it for today's presentation. And oh, one more call for the poll. Looks like we've got quite a few people who had answered there. But yes, if you missed the poll, um, we've got about a minute left to uh, go ahead and enter your information there if you'd like. Um, and then there will be a quick survey just as we leave this webinar. If you answered yes that this um, was regarding an active project, you can go ahead and enter your project name there just for our records. Um, that'll help us out with keeping all of our follow-up organized. So we'd appreciate that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Heather and Ty, for joining us. Um, it was really great to dive deep into the products that you offer and great to know about that garage door um, line as well. I'll definitely keep that in mind. I occasionally get garage door inquiries. So um, that was definitely helpful for me. Um, but yeah, thank you both for joining me today. Um, and thank you to all of our guests who joined us. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their Thursday. Thanks, Ben. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day.